Today, Ryan's got big plans for using big displacement to make big power for his entry in our first muscle truck series matchup. His 454 SS gets new heads, a new valve train, and a new throttle body to wake his big block. It's all today here on Trucks. Hey, welcome to Trucks. Today, we're back in the shop working on muscle truck wars. Now, last time, we found out what each of our factory sport trucks is capable of, so now it's time to dig into their awesome potential and finish what the factory started. Now, Kevin's 94 Lightning has 88,000 miles on it. My 90 SS, almost 140,000. So it's fair to say that both of these trucks are well used, maybe even a little abused but it's pretty typical of what's available on the market. Now, in case you miss it, we're gonna take a look back and see where we got these trucks in the first place and what we've done with them so far. Check it out. We started out with two stock, average condition sport trucks we bought just like you guys would from an internet auction. The 454 was missing its stock chrome steel wheels and was now sporting aluminum rims and co-op tires but the main ingredient was there, the big block. Well, a factory restricted big block, but there's plenty of untapped potential there. Now the Lightning still had its distinctive wheels, but it had been altered in other ways, and there were signs of neglect under the hood as well, but it was still a Lightning. So we gave both trucks a quick tune-up and headed over to Horsepower's Dyno. With some respectable numbers of the rear wheels, we took them out for a test drive to see how they did on the street, and they did not disappoint us. But we knew there was still great potential for improvement in both trucks. So we're gonna get started with my truck, and Tommy and I have a pretty solid plan on what to do with this big block. Now we know we can really wake this thing up without going overboard just by eliminating a few of the factory weak points. And now these guys are keeping secrets and they're not even gonna tell me what they plan on doing with that boat anchor. So I'm gonna take our junk Cherokee, bring it out into the warehouse, make a few measurements, see where we stand on our frame damage. I got it. Now that Cherokee ought to keep Kevin busy for a while. So Tommy and I are gonna get started on the engine. And the work we're gonna do to it, well, you could do it with the block sitting in the truck, but like we showed you before, well, the rear main seal's leaking, it's all greasy and nasty, so we're gonna make sure it's right before we go back in with it. And since we're gonna pull the engine and transmission out as a unit, we're gonna remove the doghouse just to make it a little easier. This is a way to save yourself some time by removing the front end almost completely assembled. Once the hood's off and the fluids are drained, the front bumper and grill come off to give you access to the bolts that hold the radiator support to the frame. With the fenders unbolted from the cab and a little gentle persuasion, the doghouse gets lifted off, still connected to the cooling. The drive shaft, exhaust, and harnesses get unplugged so that the engine and trans can be easily removed and separated. Now, like we told you before, we know we can make this lackluster big block really come alive with just a few key modifications. These throttle body injected 454s came from the factory with a rather low 7.8 to 1 compression ratio, cylinder heads that could use some help, and a fuel injection setup that is definitely not high performance. So to address our poor cylinder heads and to bump up our compression ratio, we're going to kill two birds with one stone by installing Edelbrock's Performer High Compression 454 Cylinder Heads. They feature 219 intake valves, 188 exhaust valves, and a 100cc combustion chamber that when combined with our factory dished pistons will give us a respectable 8.8 .8 to 1 compression ratio. To get the valves opening, we ordered up an Edelbrock Rolling Thunder Hydraulic Cam Kit. Comes with new roller lifters and push rods. And when matched with our stock ratio 1.7 crane energizer roller rocker arms will give us valve lift numbers of 625 on the intake and 639 on the exhaust side. Now, I know we might give up a little bit of torque with our cam selection, but hey, I could barely get the rear tires to hook up at stock power levels. So I'd rather have a few extra ponies on the top end. Now to bring our big block into the modern world of EFI, we're using the ProFlow multi-point injection setup. 
And if you remember, we used a similar injection system on the small block 350 we put in our YJ project with great results. Now this system comes complete and lets you fine tune your combination without requiring the use of a laptop by letting you control the engine's parameters with their calibration module. Now this method is a much more efficient way of giving the engine the fuel it needs than any other carb or TBI setup. Now to get rid of the exhaust gases, we'll ditch the restrictive factory manifolds in favor of some high flow TES headers with ceramic coating. It certainly doesn't hurt our eyes and brings a little flash to the otherwise dark engine bay. And since it's a durable coating, these should stay looking good for a while. The heavy cast intake is crusted in place from years of neglect and comes off first, followed by the even heavier iron heads. And since we're gonna be replacing all our fasteners, we don't have to keep up with anything. Just get it out of the way. The good news is that the valley looks fairly clean and there was no signs of any unusual wear or damage inside the block. The ring ridge looks to be mostly carbon. Cylinder walls aren't scored up. Those look all right over there. Yeah, mine's in the same shape. Cool, we don't have to rebuild the short block. Less work. <laughs> yeah, really? Up next, with a good bottom end to start with, Ryan and Tommy rebuild the top end of the big block. And later, the Turbo 400 gets a shift kit to help put all that newfound power to the pavement. Stick around. Oh, hey, welcome back. Well, Ryan and Tommy are still in there working on that 454, and they still won't let me in to see what they're doing, so I'm gonna go find another cup of coffee find something to do out here. Yeah, he's gonna stay out there for a while too. Meanwhile, over the break, we've got this thing torn down, cleaned up, and we're hitting it with a fresh coat of paint. And after a closer inspection, we can tell somebody's been in here before. There's stamp marks on the connecting rods, and the pickup tube's been welded to the oil pump, which is a pretty good indicator. This thing's been freshened up before, and probably not too long ago. So it's safe to say we can throw a top end kit on this thing and not have any problems. But first, we need to get a rear main seal in this thing to keep the oil inside the engine. Using a small screwdriver, gently tap one side of the upper half of the two-piece seal, being careful not to score the machine parts. Once you've got enough of the seal exposed, pair of pliers is all we need to remove it. The top groove is machined into the rear main cap. We're offsetting our seal by about a quarter inch for a little extra insurance against an oil leak. The lower half of the seal goes in place easily, followed by a dab of RTV to seal the two halves together. All right, with our seal installed, our cap back on and torque to spec at 110 foot-pounds, now we can start putting on the good stuff. The biggest reason for choosing this roller cam is to free up a little more high RPM horsepower, and this stick should help take care of that. Now in order for us to get our timing gear on the crankshaft without beating it to death, we're gonna heat it up a little bit, let the metal expand, that way we don't risk ruining the crankshaft. The heat will expand the timing gear, loosening it up to slip over the cam a lot more easily. Just don't get carried away. There she is, slid right on. The retainer eliminates end play in the cam and a little Loctite on the bolts keep them from backing out. Follow that with the timing chain, paying careful attention to the alignment mark. Another performance advantage of aluminum heads is the obvious weight reduction over heavy iron castings. You can eliminate about 100 pounds just by changing the heads and intake manifold. The hydraulic roller lifters are a direct replacement for the flat tappet originals and get dipped in engine oil before installation. Then we can drop the new push rods in place. Now there's a flat spot on one side of the trunnion bearing. Make sure that side faces up. The full roller machined aluminum rockers reduce friction and free up power. In some cases, up to 30 horsepower over stock. 
Now you ask 10 different guys how to adjust valves and you'll probably get 10 different answers. But basically what you want to do is make sure the cam lobe is on base circle and go ahead and spin the push rod with your fingers and tighten down the adjuster until you feel resistance. That means you're at zero lash. Then go an additional three quarters of a turn and tighten down your set screw. A 3 8 bead of RTV and an extra dab at each corner is what I prefer to use as end gaskets for our new intake manifold. Our new ARP fasteners are dropped in place, then tightened down in sequence. And finally, torque to spec. These great looking aluminum valve covers we got from GM Performance give us the choice where to add ventilation. So we've just reused the stock location and marked and drilled a hole with a step drill. Now we've got a place to add oil. We also drilled out the other valve cover so we could add the PCV valve. Our new oil pump is an OE replacement from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Then some RTV in the corners, followed by the one-piece oil pan gasket seals up the bottom end. All right. I'll finish torquing these pan bolts to 10 foot-pounds and it'll be ready for Tommy to bolt on the balancer, headers, distributor and the rest of the accessories to get this thing ready to go back in the truck. But before we can do that, I got some work to do on that transmission over there. Man, I don't have to fix that, do I? <laughs> no, I got this one covered. Don't worry about it. Hey, welcome back to Trucks. Well, they're still not letting me in this studio, so I still can't see what they're doing. I can't even work on my lightning. So I've been messing around with this Cherokee that we pulled out of the weeds, and uh, despite the fact that the bumper and the frame rail behind it are wadded up into the tire, it's not as bad as it looks. And later on this season, we're gonna show you guys how to think your way through a collision repair like this and get your rig back up and running. Man, that thing's really messed up. It's not as bad as it looks, and everybody's a critic. All right, with Kevin preoccupied out there in the shop, well, that gives us a little more time to get this truck put back together. Now, we've already beefed up our 454 with an Edelbrock camshaft, cylinder heads, ProFlow EFI setup, and a set of headers, and it's just about ready to go back in the truck. But we're not gonna reinstall the stock transmission. We need to beef this thing up as well. And to do that, we're gonna install this B&M Shift Improver Kit. It's no surprise that GM's heavy-duty Turbo 400 ended up behind our 454. Even still, it's designed for smoother, more comfortable shifting and accomplishes that by slipping a little bit from one gear to the next. Our B&M Improver Kit minimizes slippage, making the transmission more efficient, helping to reduce heat, which is the number one killer of every automatic transmission. The first step is to remove the E-clip and the accumulator, then remove and discard the spring underneath it, then reinstall the accumulator. Now using the 5 30 seconds drill bit supplied in the kit, you need to drill out one of the fluid passages in the separator plate. Just make sure you're drilling the right one. Now putting it all back together starts with the gaskets and separator plate. The reassembly really shouldn't give you any trouble. The valve body goes next and gets torqued to spec reusing the factory bolts. Followed by a new filter, gasket, and finally the pan. All right, with our transmission just about ready to be bolted to the engine, well, there's a couple of small things we wanted to take care of. We went ahead and installed a new modulator valve, and since it's a lot easier to do here on the benchtop, we're gonna install a new front seal. Even if your front seal doesn't look like it's leaking, go ahead and replace it now. It's only a couple of bucks, and the peace of mind is definitely worth it. The stock torque converter gets a bath since it's gonna get reused. It stalls at a fairly low RPM, which is where the 454 starts waking up anyway. There's no need to look for power where it doesn't exist, and these just aren't high revving engines. It may look like a new case, but Tommy just cleaned it, scuffed it up, and threw a coat of paint on it just because we care. Stabbing the engine and transmission back in is a breeze with the doghouse out of the way. And it all looks like a million bucks with a fresh coat of paint and new valve covers. Now you may never see that detail again, but it's cool to know that it's clean as a whistle underneath the hood.
When we come back, Kevin almost finds out what he's up against. Where do you think you're going to sit power-wise? Probably around 400 horsepower. 400? Yeah. Good to know. Hey, welcome back. Well, I found my shop key and let myself in, so now I'm finally going to get to check out what these guys have done to the big block. Man, this looks good. Huh, compliment from the Ford guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, after we stripped it down to a short block, gave it a thorough inspection, it looked like somebody had been in there before, so we knew we were in good shape. First thing we did was slide in a Performer RPM roller cam. Then, to bump up our compression ratio a little bit, we installed Edelbrock's aluminum Performer cylinder heads with the 100cc chambers. And for exhaust, we installed their TES ceramic coated headers. Now to get fuel in this thing, we're ditching the heavy cast iron intake and underperforming TBI setup and replacing it with something we know that works, the Performer RPM ProFlow EFI. And to cover up our crane roller rockers, we're throwing on a good looking set of GM valve covers. All this lightweight aluminum stuff, it looks good even if it's still going to be slow. <laughs> You're hoping. And for ignition, we already dropped in a new Mallory distributor, throw in a set of Excel Extreme 9000 plug wires, and finish it off with some E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs. With all this stuff and letting it breathe on top, please tell me you're not going to go back into the stock exhaust. No, we're not going to use any of this crimped mess, but since it's getting a visual as well as a tailpipe inspection, we're stuck with the OE configuration, which means we've got to use a single converter. But it's going to be a 3-inch high-flow converter feeding into a stainless steel Magnaflow performance muffler for a nice healthy rumble. Now, I'm busting your chops about this thing being slow, but obviously these parts are really going to wake it up. Where do you think you're going to sit power-wise? Uh, probably around 400 horsepower. 400? Yeah. Good to know. Now, if you've got a 73 through 80 GMC or Chevy pickup, check out LMC Truck's new special edition grill that features a blend of OE styling with a cool custom design. Two years in development and precision machine tooled, this rugged plastic all chrome grill is injection molded, so unlike traditional aluminum billet grills, there's no bent or warped bars and no finish that you constantly have to polish to keep shiny. It mounts right into the factory locations and comes with all the hardware you need to put it in. So now you can go from stock to style in minutes. They even have a custom billet emblem for Chevrolet and GMC trucks to finish off the look. LMC Trucks custom special edition grills cost about 200 bucks. The emblems run you about 50. Now earlier today, you saw us use Royal Purple's Max Stuff assembly lube when we installed our new valve train. We did that to eliminate friction on first startup, thereby reducing wear on our new parts. And if you're doing internal engine work, this stuff is good cheap insurance and Royal Purple's full synthetic engine oil will make sure we get maximum horsepower and torque out of our big block here. This will also reduce emissions and help save us fuel. Now you can pick up Royal Purple's full line of products at just about any major auto parts store. Now if you want information on this or any other product we use today on the show, check us out at PowerBlockTV.com. Thanks for watching Trucks. See you guys next week.